afternoon, my respected teachers, honorable guests, and my uh, colleague doctors. Today, I feel very much honored to participate in this glorious symposium, Diabetes and CKD Perspectives. Uh, my duty is to take you through the management of the glycemic control in patients with diabetes and CKD. Uh, the learning points are, I will take you through the definition of the diabetes kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, and how to screen, and where to set the glycemic control in diabetes kidney disease, and KDO, KDO QI 2012 update guideline, and choice of OHA in diabetes kidney disease, and I will elaborate more about role of linagliptin in diabetes kidney disease. So diabetes kidney disease, develops in approximately 40% of the diabetic patients and is the leading cause of the CKD worldwide. Although end-stage renal disease, the most recognizable consequences of diabetic kidney disease, the ma majority of death is due to the cardiovascular disease and infection before needing the kidney replacement therapy. And natural history of the diabetic kidney disease uh, includes the glomerular hyperfiltration, progressive albuminuria, declining GFR, and ultimately ESRD. So for the CKD, we can say that abnormal in kidney structure and function for three months with the implication for health. In that case, we can define the CKD. But for diabetic kidney disease, we have to say that persistently high urinary albumin creatinine ratio more than 30 mg per gram or sustained reduction of EGFR below 60 mL per minute per 1.73 meters square. So screening of diabetes kidney disease should be performed annually for all patients with the type 1 diabetes starting from five years after diagnosis and for the type 2 di diabetes starting from the time of diagnosis. And when we see the patient with the albuminuria in diabetes patient, the presence of the diabetic retinopathy also indicates strong, also suggests that there's a, a diabetes kidney disease. So preferred test of albuminuria is the urinary ACR, performed on a spot sample, preferably in the morning. So this is the uh, figure showing the natural history of the diabetes kidney disease. So starting from two to five years after diagnosis, GFR can be still high. And then uh, starting from 10 years of, after diagnosis, that's, there's a microalbuminuria, and then there's a cellular injury and pathophysiological process occurring throughout, like a mesangial expansion, glomerulosclerosis, tubular interstitial fibrosis, and inflammation. So according to that pathophysiological process, uh, GFR can be from high to normal or low, and ESRD develops gradually. So after 20 years, so this is the figure mostly uh, related to the type 1 diabetes. But in type 2 diabetes, depending on the degree of the glycemic control, that pathophysiological process can change. So how we can estimate the renal function? So to re estimate the renal function, there are three formulas we can uh, get the, we can do it, the cockcroft growth formula and MDRD equation, which show to be better than cockcroft growth equation. And finally, now we are using the CKD epidemiological equation, who, which should be more superior over the MDRD equation. So what are, what are the meanings of those equations? So whenever we have to screen the CKD and diabetes patient, first step is the, we have to do the serum creatinine at least annually. But in selected patients, we have to do every three to four months and we can calculate the EGFR or creatinine clearance. So creatinine clearance, we can calculate it from the cockcroft golf formula. But MDRD, we can get the more appropriate EGFR, and then CKD EPI is more uh, appropriate for the EGFR determination because it includes the races, age, and the weight. So the figure is no? Serum creatinine is a time being. Jamaru ablo lo biro. 
if you, we have a creatinine level, we can calculate the EGFR. So the, the, the message I would like to give you is that we shouldn't uh, satisfy checking with the creatinine only. We have to calculate the EGFR with the available equation. Or in the, there are some laboratories which already given the EGFR, uh, uh, EGFR estimate. So the most important to detect the diabetic kidney disease or CKD is the, from the EGFR calculation. So I don't go much detail in this slides because uh, the previous speaker already mentioned the low risk, high risk and moderate risk for the EGFR in relevance to the albumin, albuminuria rate. So in the etiology of chronic kidney disease, diabetes accounts for the 43% and hypertension 25%, glomerulonephritis 12 and the, the other accounts for minority. So, what are the challenges in the management of diabetes in the chronic kidney disease? So, higher levels of the HbA1c are associated with the higher death rates in the diabetes and CKD after adjusting for markers of inflammation and malnutrition. And ESRD also alters the glycemic control and then results of the A1C testing under or overestimate the A1C and then excretion of the anti-diabetic medications can be altered by the end-stage renal disease. So various and opposing effects of the ESRD and dialysis can make blood glucose fluctuate very widely, putting the patient at the risk of hypoglycemia and which is very challenging for our physicians. <laughs>